Hey guys, it's Catch Hell. Today we'll be focusing in on some of the dirty work, the stuff they don't really tell you about fixing up these old gyms. One, we'll be stripping off all of the paint on pretty much every part. Gas tank, frame, swing arm, triple tree, you name it, it all has to go. For this, I'll be using Aircraft Ultra Paint Stripper. This stuff is the shit. We're also gonna be finishing up the rebuild on the front forks, cleaning up both rims, and then sending it off with a complete relace and truing for both wheels. At the end of this video, both wheels will be done. Let's go. So we're going to be getting the paint off of all these parts. For this, I'll be using Aircraft Ultra Paint Remover. This stuff is highly recommended. It's also highly dangerous, so make sure you're wearing proper protection for this. First thing we have to do though is sand down all the parts. For this, I'll be using 100 grit sandpaper. However, you can use anywhere from 80 to 180. All you really need to do is rub down where you want to strip the paint. I already started on the swing arm. However, I wasn't using as strong of a paint stripper, which really didn't work out as well. I basically got down to the base coat slash primer. For that, I was using City Strip, which isn't as good as the Aircraft Ultra. So first things first is to give all the parts a rub down with the sandpaper, and then we'll lay down the stripper. Ultra paint stripper is to let it sit with the stripper for at least 30 minutes. I used a paintbrush to get it spread out all over the part, which worked out pretty well for me. I also ended up using the metal scraper to get the stripped paint off the part once 30 minutes was up. One tip would be to place the parts in a bucket of water when taking the paint off. This will help keep the paint out of the way once it comes off and also stops the action of the paint stripper. I didn't do this until after I had taken the paint off of a few parts, but it was a big help with the cleanup. Alright, so we're done with the first round of the paint stripper, and I just have a few more places that need a touch up to be done with it. For example, this swing arm where I missed a couple of spots. So we'll do another small round of paint stripper, and then after that, we'll just be using the wire brush on the drill to get every last bit off, and then get it ready to be painted again. So, just got a little bit left on these, so we'll go for round two. Now, shifting gears a little bit. While I'm waiting on the paint to get stripped off, we're gonna do a quick rebuild of the front forks and reinstall the new brake pads. I bought these parts for the front fork off of Amazon, link below. 
What you'll get is the new rubber sleeve, rubber oil gasket, and a new pair of springs. As you can see, the rust and grime is also completely cleaned off of the forks, and I have to say, I'm pretty happy with the final outcome. The one pain with putting these things back together is the metal clip that keeps the rubber oil gasket in place, but once that's in, it's a breeze. You also need to be a little bit patient with slipping over the new rubber sleeve, but once that's in place, you're done. I'll fill these up with fork oil once the build is over. Next up, new brake pads. Big surprise here, but I also got these off Amazon. Something to be careful of, the casted aluminum that holds the pad is good. However, I noticed on mine, they didn't grind down on one of the fill holes. I just use a drill to get that ground down so the brake pad fits snug. Make sure to clean out the inside of your wheel hub so that these new brake pads just don't go to waste. All right, next thing we have to do is polish up these rims. The corrosion on these rims is pretty bad in some spots, especially in here. Basically what we're going to do is take some steel wool, make sure it's super fine too. For this I'm using quadruple zero, however, you can also use triple zero. We'll use this and some WD-40 to knock off all the rust. Once all the rust is off, we'll do another pass with the drill wire brush to make sure we got everything out. For the inside of the rim, we're going to use the bench grinder, which should make pretty quick work of it. So you can already see this is one of the trouble spots in here. So like I said, just a little bit more W40. I already put a good cone on it, and then you really just gotta go in with the steel wool. And that's just gonna get all that rust out of there. Now I spent a bit of time on these rims and did about as much as I could with the WD-40 and steel wool. I think it may be a bit of a losing battle to say the least. The pitting is really bad, and I don't think the chrome is really restorable, but uh, more on this later. One of the big culprits I'm hitting uh, as well as the inside of the spoke pits. I wanna get all that rust out of there. And then also on the inside of the rims as well. Uh, so that'll be my focus right here. So I ended up with using the bench grinder on the entire rim. You may be asking why after going through all the trouble with the WD-40 and steel wool. Well, the pitting is super bad on the rim. Not shown is me spending about two weeks of painting these only to have a final clear coat not set properly due to the cold weather and peeling off when I finally put the tires on. I had to go back and take that paint off, and now I'm just gonna go with the pitted metal rims. The more I thought about it, the more I realized I wasn't trying to create the perfect motorcycle, just one that works. So I've accepted that the rims will be pitted and look a bit messed up. That's okay with me. They're still gonna look super good with the new spokes and the fresh tires, so I'm happy at the end of the day. Just wish I can go back and save all that wasted time. Lacing and trimming the wheels took about six hours total for both wheels, which is pretty good. I got the new spokes from two separate dealers, one on eBay and one from David Silver Spares. There are 36 spokes for each wheel, and there are two sets of 18 spokes, an Alpha and a Bravo for each wheel. Basically, the spokes that go in from the inside and then those that go in from the outside are different. Lacing was pretty intuitive once you get the pattern down. Here's where I plug to save a picture before taking the spokes off. Please save a picture. As far as the truing goes, there are loads of great tutorials out there to true your rim. Just take the time with it and you'll get a good result. What really got me going was the radial truing. I only noticed it after I had laterally trued the rim, that's the side to side, and at that point just had to crack open another beer. So you'll get through it. So that's about all I got. In the meantime though, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Catch hell.